Welcome back to Ak and Yemi's living room. I know it's been a while since we last dropped the episode, but I've been busy. And the time I've been gone, I dropped a bunch of new music. I dropped some incredible videos. I did some live shows. I traveled across the country multiple times. And I've been creating a lot of content inside and outside the studio. You know, being an independent artist, it takes work. It takes hard work. So that's what we're talking about in depth in this, in this podcast. So really just taking y'all behind the scenes and letting y'all know what goes on in the day in the life of an independent artist and like what how do we actually get to the end goal and the result that you see on social media you know what i mean so joining us today is my partner my manager my collaborator the person behind the the lens of the music videos of y'all see all my music videos for real like all, most of my social content is filmed by kaylee you know what i mean so she's gonna be joining us kind of moving forward as like a, a co-host for a lot of the episodes and it's just dope for y'all to see the person who actually makes my vision come true. You know what I mean? And, like, it's, it's going to be dope. So if y'all have any questions, y'all have any topics y'all want me to cover, you know, comment on YouTube. I'll read all the comments. I'll respond to them. DM me. I'm accessible. You know what I mean? Let's get it. You know, I really hope y'all y'all enjoy this conversation. It's going to be dope. Let's get it. Kaylee, welcome to Ak and Yummy's living room. Thank you. Well, technically, it's also my living room. Okay. So, like, yeah, yeah, we're welcome to, <laughs> welcome Kaylee, to Kaylee and Ike and Yummy's living room. Facts, facts, facts. I appreciate you being in front of the camera this time. Yeah, it's a little weird. I'm like used to just monitoring everything and feeding you questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, stepped out in front of the camera. Yeah, so we're doing like a rare sighting. <laughs> like a bonus episode like a q a episode um we asked people on instagram to send us questions so yeah now we're gonna answer them yeah i yeah, just trying to switch it up do something a little different today um do a little rapid fire so yeah, yeah. how about i start asking you a question first yeah we can like alternate um, yeah we can alternate so someone reached out and asked how should i reach out to somebody that i want to work with wait wait let me start with like the worst reach outs is the uh, I get it. I literally get a reach out every day that just says, hey, or what's up or oh, no. or yo. Oh, no. <laughs> no the contacts, no nothing. And then I'm like, hey, what? Like, yo, what? You know, but um, it's just like some type of research or like making it known that you're not a bot or something or just <laughs> like. I usually like compliment their work is the reason why you're reaching out like what do you want and being very direct and being like hey like I love your work you know I have this thing coming up do you want to be a part of it you know I have this thing like or however you want to reach out whatever you're asking them even if you're a producer just sending an artist beats how you reach out is so um, important for the artist to even like want to press that link and, and right you know if they just mean? say beats yeah. or like shove it down your throat it, it's a little too aggressive i feel like yeah so just um but you have people hitting you up all the time so how, how would you how you how would you like to be reached out to? yeah i guess it's um slightly different since people hit me up for photography work or want to um shoot music videos or just i had someone reach out like how can you be my manager <laughs> no context like their instagram doesn't really have much um i mean shout out to them because that's mm. really that's a compliment but shoot your shot, you feel um yeah definitely shoot your shot definitely reach out to people i think just like you said with respect and maybe a little bit of research like hey i loved xyz project you did um i have a project coming up i really appreciate transparency with budget Budget as well like I understand a lot of independent musicians we don't have budgets and that's totally okay you just have to be transparent and upfront about that um, I think if it's not mentioned and if I ask and it's again not mentioned I don't I simply just don't want to work on it if someone's hitting me up to do a music video or some type of like visuals to go along with music I like to know um, their timeline, their budget. Um, if I can listen to the song, honestly, I don't want to work on a project if I can't, if I don't fuck with the song, because, Period. um, especially as someone who does, it's, I do the whole project pretty much. I take on the, the pre-production, the, I, 
if I'm directing it, I'm editing it, coloring it, that's a lot of time, like listening to it over and over again. So personally, I have to really like the music and feel moved by it, um, which is also good. It means we're all excited to work on the project. So definitely just with as many details as possible, but at the same time, you know, don't make it a, a novel. But, and also just respect people's time. Sometimes um, DM requests get lost. I prefer email. Definitely if you see on their IG, if they have like the contact button for email, I think I appreciate business done over email. Feel free to shoot a DM if I don't respond to your email. Um, but I think something like that for all professions is is nice. Period. Transparency and respect goes a long way. That ass. All right, what's your question? All right, let's go to the next question. We got, how do you make your visuals and what mm. kind of budget do they usually have? Speaking of budget, <laughs> um, I mean, how, how, how what's our budget usually on uh, visuals? Zero dollars is usually our budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're and usually working with no, not much. Yeah. Um, but I mean, let's start, let's start with say there is a zero dollar budget. Like how did you use to make your visuals? Yeah, so I mean, literally, I like had a little. I mean, maybe it was a ten dollar budget. I bought a little ten dollar like flexi tri um, tripod that for my phone, and I and I set it up and I went outside and I set it up in places and I shot those videos on my phone. And those videos went crazy. They went viral. You know what I mean? And like, it it was dope to like know that I had access to creating content i didn't need to wait for somebody to do it because i was like Fact. never about that i was like i need to do this you know right now like these um no one's gonna connect with my music if there's no visuals behind it and mm -hmm. um so yeah i think budget is really never an excuse to not create yeah yeah i i say like to start making visuals like use whatever camera you have i think phones are the best place to start i mean that's how so many people are getting discovered whether it's on social media or even on youtube like iphones are incredible i mean there's other like androids out there that also have great cameras too but start with what you have if you are looking to like buy a camera i suggest like getting like a mirrorless camera personally i'm a huge fujifilm fan i use the fujifilm x h2s which is a great camera for stills and video and they also have a whole bunch of other cameras as well that they're just differ slightly in the sizes and the features it has but overall i could suggest every single fujifilm camera i think they're all great personally i would look for something that can do 4k just to future proof yourself you might not always shoot in 4k and 4k doesn't necessarily equate to quality i just think it um a lot of people are viewing on screens that you can actually see 4k on now so that's something to look into i also think fuji film sometimes like they have these film simulations you can also create your own film simulations and download them online and it can just look perfect straight out of the camera so mm. i think we are really into color grading but i know a lot of other people don't want to spend their time doing that and that's yeah. totally understandable you have so many other things you want to do so if it you can just simplify your workflow and make it look great out of the camera you can you know technically just kind of bluetooth it like airdrop it to your phone and post it on the go is super helpful for content yeah. creation sony's are great too the only thing with me is like they do require some type of like color correction color grading after they are very flat images great quality um the menu system is a little difficult for me so that's something if you're a total beginner like definitely try to either borrow somebody's camera or yeah, rent ask it. a friend to just look at theirs or rent it you can there's a bunch of platforms online you can just rent a camera and these mirrorless cameras don't rent for that much so try it out for a weekend try it shooting a, a music video a lyric video a visualizer and see if you like it if you don't like it rent a different one and Another little hack if you have the upfront capital to just buy and then return it yeah, hopefully yeah. everything goes well and nothing gets ruined in yeah. that meantime but that's another way you can kind of like do a trial period like no shame in that yeah pro tip if you rent in too like try to rent things like on fridays because you mm -hmm. it'll count as one day like you'll get it for Facts. the whole weekend 
but you're really just getting charged for Friday and you return it on Monday. Right. But um, yeah, you get a lot charged of rental, for one day. So yeah, a lot of I, rental I, houses like they're not open on the weekend. So like rent on a Friday and you get it for the whole weekend. Yeah, you can pick it up Friday afternoon, return on Monday morning. And it just counts as one day. There's sites like Boxed Up. There's ShareGrid. There's Kit Split. There's like Borrow Lenses. There's a whole bunch of like camera rental platforms that you can check out. Start with what you have. Um, I think you know either find a friend that's in that wants to grow with you and is down to experiment. Don't expect people to who. You, you know strangers to like work for free because they they made the investment in the camera maybe but definitely if there is someone who's interested in growing their craft alongside you that would be a great relationship to form that's kind of how we started working like i wanted to i wanted to direct more i wanted to shoot more and you needed improved visuals and you (laughs) the thing is like you witnessed me doing it it wasn't like i wasn't already doing some type of visual work and like doing the grind and then i all of a sudden wanted high quality visuals you know what i mean like you saw me doing the on my phone hitting record running behind into the mic doing the take going back pausing it and you're like all right like he's he needs some help like he needs some help yeah but he was in he was doing the grind though and it's like that's so necessary though like when you do the work, people will witness it and gravitate and just want to help you because you're just doing the right, work by yourself. Right, exactly. I think like I noticed like you were doing it all by yourself and I was like, you have the vision already and like I can just help execute it. And you also allowed me to have so much creative freedom, which was a great like creative relationship where it's not like do this, this and this and I just like execute. It's like, mm it's been collaborative from the very first video we shot which was just like somewhere in the youtube archives you could probably go back and find it (laughs) definitely lives only on my hard drive (laughs) you can't find it Uh, (laughs) let's move on to the next one what's What's your favorite dish to cook you be chefing so what what do you love cooking different um it's multiple it's multiple lately i've been really you know trying to be healthy so i really love a poke bowl you know mm. what i mean loki but. you posted a poke bowl on your story <laughs> i reposted it as well that loki got like more engagement than anything else we've posted lately <laughs> I post music videos i post my songs i rap in front of the camera they're like nah i want to see the food so i was like, like I no guess engagement I gotta- food like hell likes re- like responses i reposted i got hella likes i was like on a repost like <laughs> right, it was right. a poke bowl for i guess us, everybody though, just yeah. hungry yeah Every, it must have been around dinner time or yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um i grew up eating chinese food like um and general so chicken i don't know if it's so or sow however you pronounce it general so chicken t-s-o <laughs> chicken uh that was my go-to and i learned and i was like tired of paying for that every time so i just literally googled how to make that and i just eventually made my own recipe on how to make that and um that's something like when i used to cook for like uh a good group of people i that was like my go-to in terms of like you know a main like protein dish that i would make for people speaking of general so yeah i remember you cooked that for my mom one time and mm. she was like this is so good what's the recipe yeah, yeah that's how that's i knew a, i was in once the once the family was <laughs> licking the plates i was like oh no nah, i'm in i'm valid yeah that was a good yeah, that's yeah. a good go-to for sure next question uh let's see well i guess you kind of touched on this but what kind of camera do you use fujifilm i do have multiple cameras though Mm. so this camera that's on me this is the fujifilm x h2s this camera behind me that's on akin yemi is black magic ursa mini pro 12k period um which is also great. It's a beautiful camera. Yeah. Um, we shot the Lyric video for Oil Leak on this camera. Um, and Fujifilm camera, we shot um, the majority of Oil Leak music video on it. Um, the Fujifilm's a lot smaller. It's like a digital camera size. The Ursa is like a professional camera size, which comes in handy when you want to do like certain for like ergonomics um and certain like has more features that are more like a cinema camera 
And then this wide angle camera. This is like my older camera, my Lumix GH5. Mm. Um, pretty much all the other music videos were shot on this camera. Literally like glaciers, glaciers, yeah. parachute, so early days. Um, I, I can't even think of all the music yeah, videos. Yeah. We filmed Fire. Um, but even like the you know Cavalier, social content too. Like we all just the shot. social content. So that we yeah. use pretty much anytime between 2019 and like 2022, I would say. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. Wow. So this one held me down. Um, it's still holding me down. But like I said, like you can't really go wrong with any camera. It's more so just how you use it. And just like go on YouTube, learn what settings to set the camera to always shoot on manual please please yeah, please shoot on manual if it has yeah because auto, yeah, <laughs> auto the, the auto. issue with auto settings is it, it just keeps changing as you're filming because like maybe a cloud comes over or it gets sunnier or, you know the colors change in the background so it wants to adjust and so at the end nothing looks consistent and it's hard to color grade that it's just it doesn't look polished or like cinematic if you would say i suggest if there's one piece of equipment that you should have if you have like a dslr or a mirrorless camera is just get like a variable nd mm. that way it's like um you can keep your settings on the camera the same so you can set the aperture to be the you know depth of field you would like you can set your iso to the native iso or whatever you want it to be should be consistent and then like your shutter speed you can shut it to set it to what you want it to be and then you can just adjust exposure using just the variable nd and that way you can start to get more consistent looking images fire yeah super important if you're shooting outside or like directly into the light speaking of equipment Okay. So, like, what DAW do you use to make songs? Word. And also, like, what are your favorite plugins? Cool, cool. So, if y'all don't know, a DAW is a digital audio workstation. You might have heard of Ableton. You might have heard of Logic, Pro Tools. Those are all DAWs. Um, I personally use Logic. When I was first starting, I was using FL Studio. Then I went to Ableton. Then I, do the, I went to Logic. There's like, people will battle forever on um, which one is the right one. For me, they all kind of do the same thing. It's really about preference. And like, I've learned to be very fast with tracking my vocals in Logic. And I just got my presets. I got my templates. Everything is valid. So I personally use Logic for both production and vocals. And um, yeah, I would suggest it for everyone. It's like super easy to record your stuff. And like, everything just sounds really good out the box yeah yeah i recently started using logic too um and it's so simple to just figure out i think i really gravitate towards um programs that are just clean simple and like i can teach myself and then in terms of i'm just gonna ask myself a question but like because i'm on the camera thing yeah. Yeah. but like <laughs> similarly to audio but like um we use davinci to edit all of our um visuals any content um it's complete i just have to plug it because mm -hmm. it's just an incredible program yeah, yeah, yeah. we it's it's completely free online it's free um it does every single thing plus some that premiere and final cut can do and it's the simplicity and layout and everything that i love about it mm. and it is like the industry standard for color grading so you it's just such a simple workflow from bringing your media in you can create proxies very easily um editing you can do some vfx um coloring and rendering takes is so fast um all in one program you don't, it's like you don't have to like keep like going in between programs um but yeah that's my little plug for that's my fire. favorite daw for <laughs> i mean video. honestly honestly literally like davinci resolve is a dog because it has a uh, fair, fair light, light facts, inside of it yeah. which you can sound design we taking free sound design classes it's so yeah crazy. they literally black um, magic design literally offers free classes i think a couple times a year they do these workshops and classes like some like week-long courses that are completely free taught by the people who yeah. write the manuals it's just so invaluable and like 
um, this age where an independent musician has to do everything themselves. Like you really have to wear all the hats and fill all the roles. Like this is an incredible platform that is free. And like they have a studio version. And if you ever buy one of their like cameras, it comes with the studio version. So if you're thinking of buying one of the cameras, don't bother buying the studio version because it's going to yeah. come with the camera. Yeah, the but. studio version is super helpful to have things like so you see all the captions that we do for our um, content. Um, literally like you can use AI to just transcribe like an hour long interview and it'll just have everything that we said just super accurate and then from yeah. there you know but that those are things that are only available on the studio version and personally they're super worth it yeah and also the studio version um is great because you pay once if you do want to pay for it you pay it once mm. and you have it versus like adobe is um it's like a subscription model and you keep having to pay and it's super expensive and yeah. for me it's just I, I have Creative Cloud because I use a lot of different Adobe programs, but I might not have it anymore. It's just, so, it's just I can't even justify it. Like I right. use Lightroom and Photoshop, but maybe I just downgrade to that. Like I use InDesign occasionally too, but it's so expensive. And I, it's just, it's crazy when you are like independent, like you really have to like crunch these numbers and budget and for it to be, I don't know, $400 a year or more, like it's just such a huge expense. Like I'd rather spend that on like QuickBooks or just not. I feel like even like whether you want a label or not, you should be crunching numbers because at the end mm. of the day, you're going to have to pay it back. <laughs> you're going to have to recoup the bread. You right. Know what if I mean? the label's like, paying it for you. you have, it's all money that's it's money that you're spending yeah. regardless as if it, you feel like it's coming from your pocket and right. not. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, real, for so real. Anyway, whatever you end up doing, make yeah. sure you're aware of your expenses. I think that's one thing people always come to me. Like my friends come to me, ask me questions about like accounting. I'm no CPA. I do have like a cousin, distant cousin that is a CPA and she's my CPA and she's amazing. But um, I've learned a lot of information from her. But yeah, you got to you gotta keep organized with your expenses. Keep organized with with everything especially if you're on a label make sure you know like what they're spending your money on that you're gonna have to recoup Facts. <laughs> um yeah it's like a little detour but yeah um let's see what let's see what the next question is um oh this is one this one is good how do you back up your files and name your projects overall how do you stay organized mm, that's a great transition because we were just talking about organization um I'm gonna take this question because I definitely like. I learned everything I know from Kaylee. <laughs> literally, <laughs> I think um, like organizing your computer is like is so essential. I think we all have that like folder that's just like, oh, I'll sort it later, and it'll never get touched. And when we need to find a very important document or like a photo or something we downloaded that one time that we're like, we're gonna need this later or like a screenshot we can't find it because we didn't store it properly and we're trying to guess what day or what year that was and we have no clue like also we also don't want to be in the position where you know your computer gets stolen and you don't even know what's on your computer you don't have any backups of it or it corrupts and you don't have any backups or um something like that happens like definitely don't want that to happen but like the best thing we can do is protect ourselves from that happening i really pride myself on like organizing i guess in my whole life but also especially in my computer i think it's just really important to have the date in the file name i see sometimes like producers like send a bounce and it's just like it's just a funny name and i'm like I'm never going to find that again. Like I need to rename it immediately. So I start yeah. with like the broadest category and then go down to specific towards the end of the name. Um, I'm very type A, but it's like um, year, month, day, and then maybe like the project name or for example, so say we are working on a music video for oil leaks. So I'll do like, say it was today, 2023, then do the month day then i'll do ak and yummy then i'll do underscore oil leak underscore music video underscore version v01 
And then I always do like a version or like a, a number at the end. I start with zero one. Cause even if you, if you just do one, that's when you know you're going to have like 11 versions, you know Mm. what I mean? And then it's going to mess up your order when you organize it by name. So I just always do a zero one. Um, yeah, it's just helpful when you're searching for something, like making sure all your legal documents are in place, all your producer documents. I organize them all, like I have a folder for each song and in each song I have, you know, like admin folder. So like any legal documents, producer agreements, you know, sync agreements, all that kind of stuff goes in there. And then you have like the audio folder, which has, you know, your clean, instrumental, explicit and maybe like live version. What am I missing? Uh, like yeah, all those versions. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll have like a lyric document, go broad to specific and make sure like everything is saved, like off your email too. I think if you're, especially if you're like emailing back and forth, like agreements or song versions, or they're just on the cloud, I, I suggest to download everything. And then in terms of backing up stuff, I think the cloud is very helpful for that. Um, it does cost money though, at some point to, it's like a subscription as well. I use Google Drive for everything. I know people are biased to Dropbox or whatever you wanna use, We Transfer Pro or whatever it is. I use Google Drive because it's seamlessly with my Gmail and everything. And that re- really, really helps when we are working with collaborators and submitting for a sync yeah. or with distribution and they just like need to know like they just want to have all the information like we are so organized we can just send them a link and collaborate with them and then i have like hard drives um i have a massive raid um that uses my archive like it's set up as a raid five it's an owc thunder bay four you can just google that (laughs) and then um i also have right right um we can put like links in this um i also use like the owc ssd was it called envoy oh yeah yeah, i think that one's really really fast i like to use use that for like all my projects that i'm currently editing Mm. because it is such a fast hard drive and it's pretty durable too um i do not suggest lacy drives i know i see a lot of homies out there with lacy drives they've just failed on me so many times we can't do lacy we can't do western digital um i also have heard i do own one of these hard drives myself and i need to find a replacement for it but like the sandisk really cute ssds that are like gray oh the extreme ssd joint. extreme ssds and i think it was like an orange around it mm-hmm. or reddish around it i'm currently using that for my photos and i need to find a replacement i've heard so many people having a bad experience with those currently those just that specific model like failing on them so just be cautious with that i think they've said that they've failed when they get almost pretty full i really trust samsung ssds um like the t7 yeah um they're super fast super great super 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 tiny like it's great to carry with you um those are the ones i trust the most i have like a was it a gl- glyph drives as well yeah black block black box glyph. black blocks box I can't, a <laughs> say that three times black blocks um g drives are good too yeah i guess i just would suggest against the laces especially i just um I, they failed so many times. I work in film and I used to be like a media manager and like I've heard so many horror stories of Lacey Drives just failing and corrupting and there's no way to get any information back and I just, that's the last thing I want for any creative. So. Yeah, that could be stuff, man, because it, it'd be the time where you wish you had it, you know, and, uh, yeah. So um, I want to see everyone succeed and be able to access this stuff, especially, you know, yeah. when you need it the most. Yeah, it's definitely worth the investment because it can look like a big price tag up front. And I understand. Um, definitely have your pl- your everything backed up in at least one other place. If you can afford it, back everything up in two places. Just at least all your very important things. Like, mm. you know, final copy of every one of your music videos or some, just something like if you, if something happened, something crashed and you, or something got stolen, like you want to make sure you have your own content, all your songs, all your projects, like look after yourself. Cause no one else is going to look after it. Mm-hmm. Period. Do you ever rewrite songs? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a big, like, I'm a big fan of auditioning your, your lines. Mm. So like, when I write a verse, 
you hit a flow state, right? This is this is a state you hit. You don't necessarily know, but it's like say you write one line, you're stuck, uh, stuck, stuck. You hit line two, line three is fire, and you're like, yo, and then boom, you write the whole rest of the verse like mm. so quick. Um, but then you go back like, oh, what about that first two lines? And then you start auditioning, you start auditioning, auditioning. You find something better, and then you hit that same flow state. Yo, boom. Like, so that's kind of how it is when I write. Like, I go and write something, and then literally every single line, is it the best it could be? Is it the best it could be? Is it the best it could be? It's not like a perfectionist thing. It's more, but as you do it more and more, that ability to make that decision is so concrete. You can make mm. that concrete decision. Is this good? No? Cool. Make it better. Boom. What do I need to do to make it better? Is it that one line? Is it the whole line? Scratch it. Maybe I'll write three more and I and then the fact that I have three more lines, I can audition and see which one will fit better. Maybe it's the order of the stands that I need to I switch, especially if it's a hook and they all kind of are the same rhyme scheme. So these are all things I consider when I'm writing. And um, yeah, if, if, I, if I leave the room for five minutes, I come back. And I'm like, ah, ain't it? It could be better. I'll, I'll rewrite it. Mm. And on that note, like, how do you overcome writer's block? Uh, like, are there ever moments that you just like feel uninspired to write? Lately, I overcome writer's block by exercising, mm. by like taking space away from the record. So, like, and I, I set timers when I write too. So, like, there's no that ability to overthink won't happen because you literally are on a, a timer like try to do 16 bars in 16 minutes try to do a verse in 30 minutes uh 60 minutes 90 minutes like all those activities are just strengthening your ability to make decisions on the fly mm -hmm. if you only have 16 minutes to write a 16 bar verse your ability to go to the next line even when you're not sure about that one before you'll be able to finish it remember i said you hit that flow state when the three three to five three to 16 bars you hit it boom you'll then since you have that context you can go back to those first two lines and be like oh these don't make sense no more let me replace them and i already know what i want to replace them with mm -hmm. um so that ability to um that yeah that's kind of when i go ahead and and rewrite it when i have a writer's block Fine. and are you someone i mean i know this but i'm asking for yeah, yeah. other people but are you someone who writes like on paper or in your phone or on a computer like how do you write songs it's funny so when i first started writing i i had this notion and maybe because I, I i followed a lot of poets um, but I thought that if I wrote on paper that what I'm writing will be more profound, mm. that what I'm writing will uh, mean more or whatever. And mind you, when I go and journal and I'm, and I'm or my to do list or stuff like that, that's definitely on paper because that's stuff I want to remember. Mm. Um, but for songwriting, your brain is working so fast and you need whatever medium you, you can mm. to get down those ideas as quick as possible. That might not even be uh, physically writing. That might be a voice memo. That might be writing on the mic as you're recording it. Um, lately, I write a lot on my phone and I write on my laptop a lot because I, I can literally, it's, it's, it's keeping up with my brain. My brain is just trying to, I'm just trying to keep up. And I've written songs so fast on my laptop that I know if I would have be at a pen and paper, I would have been on, already on line five right. and I'm writing line two and I'm like, Ugh, but I'm just trying to get it down. You know what I mean? So right. I think it's so important to find a medium that works for you. But that's, that's what I use. I use my phone and my laptop. Mm, fire. Yeah. Um, like what does a studio session look like to you? Like how do you, what's your process like and what's, um, how do you structure a studio session? Yeah, so, um, okay, when I have studio sessions lately, we come in, we all share what we've been listening to. Mm. We all, like, maybe I might have a playlist of, like, oh, yeah, we should make this vibe. I've been on this vibe lately. I've really been loving the vocals in this one. I love the instrumentation in that song. I love that. And as a result, you get inspired by the decisions that uh, other musicians have made. Or even what everyone in the room, like, there's been an uh, instance where, like, oh, I've been listening. I've listened to that this morning. Cool. We're all in the same headspace. Mm. And as a result, we're going to make something because we're aligned that way. Right. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily copying, copying the songs that we're listening to, but it's more so of, like, I want to get a sense of what everyone, uh, what they're drawn to and what they like and what instrumentation they like so that we could pull those elements out and even, like, recreate some of those elements that 
we know we like to listen to because what we like to listen to is usually what we like to create or mm-hmm. something like in that same world you know what i right. mean so um that's how i start my studio sessions when it comes to the writing it's just a it's a flow you know what i mean like uh the producers are are making a beat they're hitting, they're doing the drum loops they're playing the instruments um i have a, a melody boom i'm voice mowing it um i might leave the room once i get like a, a skeleton i'm like oh send me a bounce of that i might leave the room set a timer 16 minutes 16 bars in 16 minutes write my verse come back yo i have this boom uh, jot it down see what the other songwriter if i'm working with somebody else what they got kind of bounce our, our ideas off each other that's how i work um i know people that like they can't write in a session they need to like take the beat home and write mm. by themselves i've always been a person that likes the pressure mm. of writing in front of other people because it makes me work quicker right. and uh some of my best songs have come out uh be in the fastest time be, due to that pressure of me having to write mm, really fast yeah glacier is super fit super fast breathe super fast i feel super fast because they were in a session you know the producer makes the beat he's waiting for, you know they waiting for you to finish writing you done you done you know what i mean so like and you're like you get it down and then boom you know you record it and then on to the next hi yeah so one of the questions from our instagram do i need a lawyer oh interesting yes i think if you're ever signing a contract or an agreement especially things that involve like a larger sum of money um and legalese try to get a lawyer especially look for an entertainment lawyer ask around ask your friends ask who they use have representation and this is this is for a lot of like agreements and contracts you're going into but especially if it's with a distribution or a label or a publisher like a hundred percent make sure a lawyer is reading over that contract lawyers can work like on like either like a five percent percentage or a flat fee um you can try to just try to form relationships with lawyer a lawyer that um can meet you where you're at yeah um see if they're down to like draft up a producer agreement that you could then use as a template so you might only have to pay them once for that um agreement um be wary if it's a pretty big agreement like a label deal or something and it's like a lot of money on the table just make sure you have you know your own like compass as well because if they're working on that like percentage you know they they might want to push it forward even if it's not in your best interest just because they're getting that percentage of that large sum of money so just be be cautious whenever you're working with somebody especially somebody new definitely try to form a relationship with a legal team prior to those massive deals coming your way but also like understand like when it makes sense and when it doesn't make sense yeah yeah. nah that's totally fine yeah period yeah yeah it's just like um you always hear these like horror stories horror stories of um (laughs) artists signing deals and maybe they like slightly read it over but like maybe they didn't understand anything or fully understand the repercussions of everything that was in that agreement and then they get screwed over because Mm. they didn't sign to anything that was in their favor they didn't have anyone vouching for them everything is negotiable like you do not have to be pressured into something it's not the only time that an opportunity is going to be available even no matter how much somebody is going to say that like i always believe you know if an opportunity comes once Mm. like it it can come again so if you don't feel ready if if you don't like if they're pressuring you to sign like by a certain date and that doesn't give you enough time to get a legal like yeah. representative to sign it. You don't sign it. Nah, labels will do that. They'll like they'll give you a very unreasonable deadline, you know, um, and say, oh, you got three days, four days to get this signed. You know, you can't get a lawyer by that time. They know you don't have legal representation, and you know you feel forced 
I mean, we we've been uh, watching the Chris Voss negotiating um, mm. masterclass yeah. recently. One thing he said was, "There's no such thing as deadlines." Yeah, and when he's he said like that, negotiating like when he said that that things. something clicked because I was like, "Wow!" Like mm. every deadline that somebody imposes to you is a suggestion. <laughs> It's not a hard, fast rule. That's and when they would like it by. That's when they would like it by. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've, even with sync stuff, I've had stuff be like, "Oh, I need it by Wednesday." They really need it by Friday, but they say Wednesday because they want they want to make sure they they good. Yeah. And it's like that's not the real deadline. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, we were like with sync yeah. too. Like we love to always like submit early. So I guess moral of the story: get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know, like. Say a lawyer might want, not want to look at every contract, but you give them that pub deal, you give them that record deal, that distribution deal, that's something that they'll absolutely drop what they got and going on and look at it because they know there's money in it for them. Got another question on Instagram for you. Did you write a song called Catch a Boy years ago for Rihanna and Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> Is this dead ass though? It's someone Yo, wrote. I really thought I wrote that. Yo, that's crazy. I mean, crazy. that would have been light legendary. Um, first of all, if I wrote that song, you absolutely would know. I'll be shouting out from the rooftops if I wrote for Britney Spears and Rihanna. Like, what? Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, nah, that's not me. But that's dope, man. Like, I appreciate you, um, you know. Thank you for, you know, seeing that in me, you know, and really. Yeah, uh, maybe we can manifest that. Let's, man let's go ahead and you know, manifest that right now. On like, Rihanna's, like, next album, whenever that's going to be, that'd be fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I wasn't me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's look at a different question. That was mad funny. I love. What should I get to make a home studio? Mm, I love this one. I love this one. What should I get to make a home studio? Mm -hmm. So. I would say literally the only thing maybe all right so you need a interface uh a great starter one is the scarlet 2 i 2 focus right and this is i'm answering this question as if like i have less than 500 dollars and i like really want to make a studio second you need a mic stand you know honestly rock with facebook marketplace because there's a lot of like studio closings and stuff like that i'm in la so people are closing studios all the time if you're in new york literally just walk down uh <laughs> williamsburg or wall street during trash day or at the end of the month somebody's throwing something away that you that you could use yeah, somebody's always moving it's so crazy what they be throwing away but go on facebook marketplace look up a mic stand um look up all these things so focus right um get yourself an interface get yourself a mic stand get yourself when i first started record vocals i used the at 2020 it's the 80 80 dollar mic from audio technica mm. it's great sounds really good um i currently use a tlm 103 it's a little bit more money but for me it was worth the investment audio people like that's the one thing not to skip out on is the quality of your audio it's people that record in their classes but literally you could just take a blanket and just put it over the mic stand and like just to like uh cancel out the reflections in the room in the room when you're recording your vocals so people like make their own boost and you can literally make that from like mm. u-haul moving blankets you can make you can make yeah. that from like any make type sure of they're clean yeah literally what so, do you use for um i for use that? i think it's a rlx iso guard mm. uh rlx mud guard is what i use to kind of like which you put your mic in it and it like will um, isolate a lot of the frequencies that would otherwise uh, reflect around and it'll sound like you're in a booth but like i'm Fine. in the room that is the same room that the producers are making the beats in you know what i mean so that one piece of gear really helped like take my vocals and make them sound a lot closer and a lot forward in the mix um and yeah so all these things are things that you invest once and you'll never have to pay for studio time again. You'll never have to like rely on an engineer because you can literally YouTube everything. Everything I learned about recording myself, I either learned um, in a studio, uh, learning from somebody else, like in a session when I'm just asking the, the producer and the engineer questions like, yo, what did you do? What, what plugin did you use for this? And if you don't have, if you are not doing sessions yet, you can just go on YouTube and somebody's gonna teach you how to mix, somebody's gonna teach you how to record, um, yeah nice when are you releasing new songs um yeah i'm in i'm in like uh man the stuff i've been making right now is just 
I'm in a different bag. I'm, I'm I'm in a different bag. I'm singing, man. I'm like really singing. I'm hitting my harmonies. I'm uh, I'm just making sure it's right. You know what mm. I mean? I'm really getting it right. Um, the the difference, I guess, with this uh new next era. couple, this new <laughs> era, yeah, is like I'm making the songs without like really saying that they're a body of work yet. And I think mm-hmm. things will naturally become a project. Just make a bunch of songs and you'll have a project. They'll naturally come together. And so that's what I'm doing because I don't want to like put a limit or a rule on what I'm doing yet. And as I'm making these, I'm like, oh, yeah, these kind of these kind of all kind of come in the same mm-hmm. group. I'm all kind of speaking on the same topic here. And uh, yeah, so the consistency of just making things. Um, yeah, you'll hear something very, very soon. Yeah, I'm excited for this new Akinyemi era. Yes. Um, it's lit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I Thank think... Thank you yeah. so much for pulling up and yeah. um, walking two steps from behind the camera to in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> making a rare appearance. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we should do this more often. Yeah, we're um, going to be doing this, you know, way more often. So, if y'all want to if there's any questions that we didn't answer that y'all want to ha- um answer in the future episodes definitely leave that in the comments uh like comment subscribe leave us a you rating know the deal. Follow leave us a rating us. on podcast if you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify definitely leave us a five-star review um yeah yeah let's get it let's All get right. it peace bye